Okay. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Sorry about the clumsy opening, but that's the way it goes sometimes. Hi, Sarah. Hey, Nikki. So, uh, yeah, okay. Hello, hello, hello. It is Drama Free Friday, people. It's Drama Free Friday. If you're here, make your presence known so I know that you're here. And all is well in the world. Sarah, how you doing, girl? How are the babies? You got a full life going on there. I watch your... I watch some of the things that you stream, and I think, oh, I don't know how she does it. Oh, I don't. Hey, Janet. So it's Drama Free Friday. Um, yeah, it is. It is Drama Free Friday, and I'm glad. And I apologize for the way I sound. I've been dealing with a little bit of a, you know, cold kind of thing going on in my head. So I sound kind of crappy. Uh, I went <laughs> Hi, Pam. I went to um, the doctor this week, and she said, your spine is congested. And I thought, that is pretty bad when your spine is congested. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. So you might notice that there's a little bit of difference in the audio this week because we've got some other things going on. So you might have to just put up with a little bit of the, it's maybe not a sync, you know, not quite synced up. The satellites aren't quite synced up. <laughs> and now much sleep for you. Hi, Linda. Hi, Deborah. Damon, hey. <laughs> Damon, welcome to my stream. <laughs> oh, it's great. Yeah, no real complaints. Okay, great. All right, so chit-chatting, chit-chatting. You know, I'm going to tell you that it is absolutely beautiful here today. I should be out walking because it is, I mean, for this time of year in January, the end of January, it is absolutely glorious. The sun is shining. It is stunning outside. The weather has is warming up into like the 50s this weekend, which is virtually unheard of in the Midwest. Hey, Cindy. Welcome, welcome. Um, I mean, it is just literally unheard of in... Uh, in January in the Midwest. So, you know, when we're not covered up with snow and cold weather, it doesn't make you stay inside and do all your stuff quite as much. But um, yeah, it's been it's been just lovely. I mean, we the Midwest does suffer from um, crazy weather. One day it can be 20 below or, you know, 10 below or whatever. And in, a week later, it can be 30 to 50. And it's so crazy. So... Anyway, um, yeah, so it's going to be a fun day today because we have a special guest. And our special guest, I'm going to introduce her, and um, we she's been on one other time when we were kind of playing around with um, some, some interview technology kind of fun stuff. This time it's going to be different because we're actually going to show each other a couple of things, and so I think you guys will have fun with that. So, the person that I'm going to um, introduce you to is someone whom I have grown to uh, respect and love as a fellow artist. She used to live in California. She's now in um, the southern states, and she is just a phenomenal artist. She is married to a great guy. I don't know him personally, but every time we see each other, it's like, hey, you know, it's like we're, it's like we're related to each other somehow I don't know he, he walks through the room he hears me streaming he goes that's Barb right <laughs> it's like hey so anyway um and he's in the audience today which is kind of fun so anyway you guys I'm going to just without a big thing because we're going to let her talk I'm going to introduce you to Kylie Givehand Hey, Kyla. How are you? Hey, Barb. I'm wonderful. How are you? <laughs> hello. Hello, everybody. I see Damon in the audience. <laughs> yeah, he's upstairs. I'd send him a text. I was like, here's the link. Get yeah. on. Yeah, get on. Read the chat. Send me a text if there's anything I need to know. <laughs> exactly. Technology in your same house. Listen, I get right? it. I get it. I really do. 
So um, let's see. Rhea came in and uh, Trina came in. So, uh, yeah, everybody's coming in. They're all saying hi to you. Hi, and, hi uh, Yeah. So, okay. So we didn't talk a whole lot about what we're going to do today, but we talked a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um it could be very exciting <laughs> because, <laughs> because you guys, I guess you have to, I just, I'm just going to be straight up with everybody. This is a new experience for moi. Mm-hmm. And um, so let me just tell you, there's a lot going on. But our technical department, a.k.a. Race, uh, what's he going by today? Race Owen, our technical department is on standby. And so we are grateful. We are grateful, we are grateful, we are grateful. (laughs) And I'll tell you the rest of that story later. Um, So anyway, everybody's saying hi to you. Uh, Nikki says hi to you. Deborah, uh, Damon says hi to you. (laughs) Damon Givehand is the husband of Kyla Givehand. So anyway, let's get to it. So what I want to know, Miss Kyla, is what have you been up to the last few uh, weeks or whatever you want to talk about? What you been up to? So much, Barb. I don't, I'm not trying to keep up with you for sure, but because I look at all the stuff you're doing and I'm like, how, when does she sleep? Does this woman sleep? Um, and I often wonder. <laughs> so it's no wonder that you got a little stuff happening in your spine. Um, you're a busy lady. So, it's true. you know, I don't, I've been doing a lot. So this year, 2015 was a crazy year for me, moving to a new place. Um, still not quite sure if I'm in on the West Coast or the East Coast, some days I wake up and I'm like, oh, and then I have to remind myself I'm in Georgia, um, not in California anymore. I think I still operate on the West Coast on Pacific time. So lots of like transition happening, but creatively just in January or let's, let's say December and January, I have been more creative in December and January than I was probably sadly to say all of 2015. That's Um, amazing. That is, but (laughs) it's very cool too. (laughs) Yeah. 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 At the same time, it's both. Um, And I'm excited about that. I hope I can kind of keep that momentum going for the year because last year felt like such, for lack of better terms, like a dud year for me. It was Mm -hmm. like, what did I do? Like other than move and try to acclimate, I feel like Mm -hmm. I was so creatively starved. Mm -hmm. Um, And so the reason I was able to be so creative in December is because we did a blog hop um, to introduce the Journey Within course, um, which is like my new and improved book in a day uh, idea. And I'm sure we're going to talk about that later. But the blog hop was each of the guest teachers giving me a challenge to do in my journal. (laughs) Yeah, I remember getting I remember getting in a little trouble for that for the challenge (laughs) that I gave. (laughs) <laughs> because none of you were, nobody was easy. Nobody was like, okay, we'll give you something. To eat. Everybody really pushed me out of my comfort zone, which I'm totally grateful for. Mm-hmm. But trust me, every time I would open the emails to see what people were sending me, I'd be like, oh my God, is she serious? Um, <laughs> so yes, I knew Barb was going to give me something that would be totally outside of my area, uh, like outside of my wheelhouse. Yeah. Um, and I saw the word stitching, and I don't think I saw anything else on there. I saw the word <laughs> stitching. I was like, ah, sewing machine. Um, so yeah, it was, I, you know, leave it to Barb to push us in ways we need to be pushed because I did Barb's challenge, and I was like, why don't I do this more? Why am I not stitching things more often? I, I love cool. it. I love stitching paper. I love sewing on paper. It's awesome. Cool. cool. Yeah. So that's, that's been me. I mean, I've been doing um, with the journey with them, with the course. I feel like I wake up every day thinking of a video I could mm-hmm. record for people and share. And um, But I also don't want to overwhelm people. So I got some mm-hmm. videos kind of stocked up and ready to roll out. Um, oh, that's video, cool. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, tell them, what is this journey within you speak of? <laughs> um, so for those of you... Um, who are new to me and you've never experienced me before in 2013 i did i was trying to push myself creatively and push Mm -hmm. myself out of my box um and out of my isolated little workspace and you know trying to open up my life a little bit my creative Mm -hmm. life so i did something called book in a day where i created a book every day no that's not true every week i created a book every week but i did it in one day 
Mm. So I would create a handmade book and I would film myself doing it. And then I popped it on YouTube. Okay. Can I just stop and tell you something about that? I found you when you were into that process several Mm -hmm. months. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I was looking for on YouTube, but it was something to do with art journaling or making a binding of some kind. Probably was a binding thing I was looking for. And I stumbled upon you and I started watching your videos and I'm like, she does what? (laughs) And I got so tickled watching because you would do time checks with your iPhone and, you know, Mm -hmm. show the time. So you would prove that you'd done it in within a day. And I'm like, and then I got hooked on that because I'm like, okay, I got to see the next time if she really does that. It, you want to talk about me being insane and busy? <laughs> that, my friend, was insane. Just saying. It and absolutely. If, it absolutely was, Barb. And there were days when I thought Damon was going to disown me. He'd be like, seriously, <laughs> shut it down. No more book in a day. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, because I would. I would be up sometimes till like four in the morning trying yeah. to finish the book. Yeah. Um, and I think, Barb, you you watched some of them, so you know I would totally underestimate what it was going to yeah. take for me. To exactly, <laughs> and, and, and there's it seems so easy. Yeah. I do that too. It seems like so easy, and she you should be able to get this done because it's an easy technique or it's an easy thing. Mm-hmm. You do it in your sleep with one hand tied behind your back, yeah. and then you start doing it, and you go, "What was I thinking?" <laughs> Exactly. That happened to me a number of times in the 52 weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, So in 2014, I wasn't as ambitious. I thought, Mm -hmm. okay, let's just do one a month. So I did one a month. Um, And then, like I said, in 2015, it was like creative desert. I didn't do, I barely made, Mm -hmm. I mean, I I barely did anything creative Mm -hmm. um, in terms of like my own creative practice and making books and Mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. I did other little creative things, but Um, so 2015, you know, coming into 2016, I started to say to myself, you cannot have another 2015 creative year. You've got to do something. Mm -hmm. So I thought, how can I up the ante a little bit? How can I make it a little more interesting? How Mm -hmm. can I invite other people to do it with me? Mm -hmm. Um, because that was fun for me when in 2013 and 2014, when other people would make the books and send me emails with their photos and show me pictures that their seven year old daughter had made. There's nothing like that. There's nothing yeah. like that feedback and getting to see what other people do with your idea, right? Absolutely. That, yeah. to me, that drove it home. That was like, okay, this is why you do it. Keep mm-hmm. going. Get your butt back in the saddle. Do yeah. more. Um, and so that's kind of what the journey within is about. It's yeah. my version of, the, of Book in a Day. So I am teaching uh, people how to make a book. We're making mm-hmm. one art journal a month. Mm-hmm. And... I'm trying to create structures that can be made in a day. So you can make your art journal in one day. Mm -hmm. And then for the rest of the month, I brought on um, 18 women who I just adore. Uh, I was very meticulous in picking who they were going to be because I wanted it to be people that I also wanted to learn from. Mm -hmm. Um, Not just, you know, oh, let's pick the biggest people out there. Let's pick the big, you know, I wanted to pick people that I actually watch and I follow and Mm I, you know, admire. So I, picked 18 folks and we've got some amazing people um, lined up and for those of you watching barb is going to be teaching later in the year she has um she's going to be a guest artist later this year and there's probably going to be some stitching i can just tell you that right now <laughs> well, maybe <laughs> who knows what barb will do she will push us whatever it is i'm sure it'll it'll be it'll be great whatever. barb doesn't know what barb's going to do yet so <laughs> it'll be a surprise to all of us yay yay we love it we love that so the teachers are giving um tutorials to supplement the work I do. So I will teach the book structure, how Mm -hmm. to make the actual book. And then I teach, you know, throughout the the month, I I give a tutorial on a technique and do a page spread. Mm -hmm. But then the, um, we have three teachers each month, you get three teachers um, giving you tutorials. And so, and they're all different. I don't have any two teachers that who have the same style or who have the same, you know, way of teaching. Mm -hmm. Everybody's different. So So far, it's been pretty darn amazing. The students are, the participants in the class are Mm -hmm. making books. Some people for the first time ever making a book, and they're just phenomenal and amazing. The stuff they're sharing and the photos and the energy of the group. And you have, you have like private live sessions going Mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. one of those that I attended 
And because I really wasn't sure what, you know, the structure was as far as how that group was going to function and everything. And in one of those, the very first one I think I went to, the one of the gals that was there had no bookmaking supplies. Mm -hmm. She was using a piece. Correct me if I'm wrong. My recollection is she was using a piece of poster board and she had nothing to cut with, not even a pair of scissors, Yeah. but she found a Swiss army knife yeah. and something that was a straight edge that she could cut against. And she was going to make a book. Yeah. <laughs> she was going to make did. a book. She, did she get it done? She did. Good she posted her. it in the Google Plus group. She made it. It was beautiful. She didn't worry about like art supplies and all that stuff. She actually took like pen and marker and made you know doodles on mm-hmm. her cover and it's beautiful it's mm-hmm. an absolutely stunning beautiful book i'm going to so. ask i'm going to ask the chat here for just a second anybody in the yeah. chat um have you guys ever made a book with non-traditional bookmaking stuff because i want you guys mm-hmm. to put that enter those in- answers into the chat if you want to oh and by the way let me tell you that as we're talking about the journey within if you will stay until we're finished with what we're going to do, Kyla is, has a special thing, a special announcement, a special little something, something for you. And you're going to want to stay for that. Right, Kyla? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. You want to stay. Okay. Sure. So just, just so you know. So the question for the chat audience is, have you ever made a book of any kind using totally untraditional tools, paper, whatever? Just just go crazy and answer that. And then I'll read the answers to Kyla. Yeah, that'll be awesome to hear. Cause I know um, I had this really crazy idea once. I was like, what if I could only use office supplies to make mm-hmm. a book? What would that look like? You know, like mm-hmm. printer paper, Sharpie, mm-hmm. um, you know, most offices had, you can have a ruler and some scissors, uh, masking tape, mm-hmm. maybe, you know, and I was like, what would that look like? But I didn't actually do it, but I was thinking that through like, you could actually make a book if you only had office supplies, right? Okay, so we've got some answers coming in. I'll share them with you. One was okay. file folders. As soon as you said, I mean, it was before you started talking about office supplies, she put in, Trina says file folders. Nice. Sarah says fishing line and corrugate. What? And then she also said dental floss. I know I've seen you use dental floss before. Um, Janet says she hasn't, but she's going to use record album cover covers this year. Um, uh, Deborah says she's never made a book. Well, Deborah, it's time. It's time, girl. Yes, yes. Uh, Let's see. Somebody else. Pam made a a mini book using coffee cozies. Mm, And she said it wasn't a book book. I'm I'm not sure what that would mean. But she made a (laughs) book. To me, if it opens and it's got pages, maybe it's a book. And um, Deborah says she's adapted catalogs. So oh, nice. That's nice. And let's see. Only made one book. Rhea says she's only made one book ever, but just used what she had on hand at the time. And in parentheses, she says she's going to Kyla's channel right after this stream, though. <laughs> and yeah. Trina says she's used duct tape. And Eileen says, hi, Eileen. She said she's made books using Pelmet Violin, and she loves that. Loves them. Pelmet Violin. I forgot what that is, Eileen. I know what it is, but I've forgotten it. I mean, I, I know the term. It. It's a, yeah, it's an English. We have an equivalent of it here, but I've forgotten what it is. I believe um, it comes, I think it comes out of England. I could be wrong. Eileen will straighten us out. <laughs> straighten us out. Eileen. Does she will. She'll tell us. Okay, so so what, so it's just basically the, the creativity desert that you found yourself in that you decided, you know, that's kind of what perpetuated this whole journey within to come forth, right? And yeah. I have to tell you something. I've done a lot, no, not a lot, but I've done several of the uh, collaboration type classes that are similar mm-hmm. to this. And you have collected a group of teachers that I personally was not familiar with. And so that was really fun for me okay. to get to see. Well, at first I was reading the names and I'm like, I don't know any of these people. And then I read <laughs> a couple and I thought, well, I've kind of heard of them. And so it was just, it, for me, I'm so excited to see what they have to offer, what they have to bring to the table, just because they're names that I don't see very often in other collaborative classes. Now, I haven't taken every collaborative class there is by any means, but, you know, I, it, that was exciting for me to see that you gathered um, 
kind of a, an eclectic, for me, it was an eclectic group of people only because it was outside my sphere of influence, you know. So yeah. to me, it was, it kind of fit that eclectic thing. Like one of the, the first things in January, I mean, she might have been the very first one, was Kelly, mm-hmm. and first yeah. teachers, and she talked about using seeds and then yeah. using seeds to do uh, watercolor um, images with. And I'm like, First of all, I was watching her class and I'm thinking, where in the world did she get seeds that were like that? Because, I mean, she had seeds that were like seeds, you know, right, and right. It, but it made what it did for me was it made me look at things in a new way. And that kind of thing trips my it floats my boat because it makes yes. me whether I do that exact thing or not, it makes me think differently. And yes. so I just want to thank you for that, because I'm kid- not kidding you. That that was that was great. That was great. Awesome. Yeah, that's like that's what I that's what I'm hoping that other people will feel too. I love the word eclectic because I think yeah. that is a perfect way to describe mm-hmm. um, all the people that that are gathered to teach in this course. And I, you know, I also, you know, like Kelly, for instance, um, who's wings, worms, and wonder, mm-hmm. um, which is you know what she does. And one of the things she does in the world is she helps people build gardens. Like mm-hmm. she's a nature journaler and she's an artist. But her her like other passion is helping people create gardens. And so. For her, I, she was like, I don't know what to do. I was like, do something you would do with your kids because she teaches like nature journaling classes mm-hmm. to children. Uh-huh. I said, do what you would do with your children for us. Teach us something like that. And so I was very, yeah. And I, I think we're going to get that kind of stuff throughout. I think people will pull from um, not just their artistic space, but from mm-hmm. like, what they what they do in their lives. Um, so I'm, cool. I'm really looking forward to that. That's yeah. great. That's cool. Okay, I got the answer to Pelmet Violin. It's interfacing like that you use in baseball caps. So it's that heavy interfacing. Oh, and she said you can get it at um, Joanne's. So thanks, Eileen, for that. So that's cool. I, I knew I'd heard of it. And it's like, oh, what is this? What is this? Come out, come back to me. Float, <laughs> float to the top, people. You know, information coming up. <laughs> Well, that's great. That's so cool. So if they want to join, um, it's not too late to join, right? No, no, they can still join. So the way it works, we tried to do two versions so that people, so it can be, you know, affordable to those who can't, you know, pay the full price for the whole year. So there's the year long, um, and that's 120 for the whole year, uh, or you can buy it by quarter. So the first three months you can get for 40 bucks, or you can take the second three months, right? So that's for people who are like, not quite sure they want to do a whole year of bookmaking they're not even sure you know that's something they want to do but or just you know financially they need to break it up into sections okay so, so they can kind yeah. of tailor it to what what works best for them yeah, yeah. and cool. the content's exactly the same in the, mm-hmm. in the quarter classes and the regular there's no different content you still get access to the group it's just a different way of paying mm-hmm. yeah and then we also oh we do have a third option um bring a friend so if you and a friend sign up together you get a little bit of a discount um oh. actually it's a a good bit of a discount. Okay. So <laughs> yeah. three options. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, and we're going to do, if you stay till the end of the class, or, you know, I say class, but it's really the end of the creative experiment and experience yeah. that we're going to have here. Um, and I, I apologize in advance if I offend any of you for what I'm going to show you. <laughs> so I just put that out there. Um, if they stay till the end, Kyla has a drawing for you. Um, you want to tell them about that? Yeah, yeah. I, I have to say before I say the drawing, you have just intrigued me, Barb. You said, I hope I don't offend anyone with yeah. what I'm going to show you. I, I, well, more than that, I hope I don't offend any males that are in the audience. Let's say that. <laughs> so oh, that Damon, just makes it even more fun. So, yeah, Damon, Damon, you might want to avert your eyes. Grace, <laughs> you might want to avert your eyes. I love it. I love it. Um, so yes, at the end, I'm, I want to give away a full year seat in the class. Um, you guys, someone here in the audience. did you hear that? A full year seat in this class. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Yay. For your generosity. That is so cool. Yes. All right. So don't, there's two things, chat, that you have to remind me of. Two things, chat. One, the drawing. Mm-hmm. And two, I have to get the sponsors out. So at the end of this this broadcast, we have to do two things because last week I forgot the sponsors and uh, it was a bad. <laughs> it, it was bad. I got some. I know people were not happy with you, Bob, if you didn't no. bring the sponsors out. No, they were not. <laughs> not okay. So, uh, anything else you want to talk about before we start playing a little bit? 
Um, I don't know. I think do you want to show other... some books. Yeah, well, I can do that, and I can also because uh, if people sign up, um, and there's only a few more days left um, in the in the month, but if you sign up before the end, before February first, mm -hmm. you also get access to the December course because there was a little mini course that I did. Okay. For December, show yeah. people how to make a book, and mm -hmm. then I had you know shared the whole blog hop experience, mm -hmm. um, got a few videos in there, page spreads. Um, so that class comes with the full year okay. of Journey Within. Um, so in essence, you end up with thirteen months of, okay. of a course, but that goes away on February first. So I okay. thought I should just put that in there, um, and then I'll show the book that we made in December. So in December. We made a dose of dough, which is you know like a back to back book. Um, and and I went, this was when I did the whole blog hop with people. Mm -hmm. So, all of this, some of these um lessons are actually in the December mini course. Cool, right, so I did a whole, a whole month of book uh, of pages. So, lots of stuff here. It was fun to do. You had some great um, spreads in there. Yeah, this one was, um, I think I had a lot of fun playing in this mm -hmm. in this journal because it was, you know, I didn't have to think too, too much. Here's the one I did here. This half is the one I did from Barb's. There was stitching. I had to do stitching involved in there. Um, so, yeah, it was fun. That one was a fun one to do. And then in January, we made um, this journal. And everybody's looks different. That's the other thing mm -hmm. about the classes. I'm giving you the basic instructions of making, and then I give you tons of suggestions of how you can take it to the next level, make it your own, be mm -hmm. unique with it. So I made mine with a canvas cover, but there are mm -hmm. lots of other people who did. Um, I think we had one person do a fabric cover. Some people had um, cardstock covers. Some people did just painted covers with paper, all sorts of things. Um, so that was that's this month's journal. Um, lessons from T.R. Smith. Um, and then we had a, a great interview with Vivian McMaster in this. Um, and if you don't know Vivian McMaster, she's a photographer and she talks to us about how to use photography in your art journal and the different things you can do with it there. So that was the January book. And then the February book, which I just loaded for folks like two days ago, um, and people are already starting to make their February book, is this little doozy here. Um, and it is, I call it the stacked portfolio book. Hmm. You won't be able to see kind of how it's bound because, you know, the, the spine is covered right now, mm -hmm. but it has, a, it's an interesting, um, creation because there's no interruption. So every page spread is a spread. Like everything mm. is a page spread. There's no interruptions in mm. the pages. Oh, that's um, which, cool. Yeah. Which I love about it. So that was my, this is my sample book. I'm going to mm. create a larger thicker one for february for the cool. whole for me to actually use for the month oh that's cool that's great um, and i think i should probably say that the 12 books were the 12 art journals we're making this year mm -hmm. in journey within none of them will be the same books that i made on youtube so it won't okay. be any of those books that i've done there they're all different books so cool cool yeah. So um, there was a comment from Heather that um, her non-traditional material that she's used is insulin pump tubing. Insulin pump tubing. Wow. Now that's interesting. That's different. That that's different. different. Yeah, <laughs> that's different. <laughs> Absolutely. Use okay. I had a couple of people in the chat that said they were um, that they were freezing, that the picture had frozen up. Just oh. reload the page because everything seems to be good. So just reload the page. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, are you anything else you want to show? Them? Um, no, I mean, I've got, you know, Barb, I have tons of books over here, but I'd, I'd rather see what you have over there. And then <laughs> it's just because you're, it's just because you got your uh, curiosity <laughs> up. Yes. Yes. My, I'm curious. <laughs> well, let's see if we can uh, come in here. Let's see if I can do the gymnastics here. Well, now, now what we have is a picture in a picture in a picture. Now, how about that, people? <laughs> how about that? Now, I'm telling you, that doesn't happen every day to where you have a picture in a picture in a picture. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> Technology is amazing. Okay, is. so so I'm going to show you my books. These are my books that I made for the January from the January Journal. Oh yeah. And so I made three books. The covers aren't finished, but um, I'm going to show you this one. One of the things that I've learned from Kyla is when making books, and and I have to tell you. I had to really make myself do this because I find this exceedingly difficult to make myself do. And um, I've taken another class with her a few months ago that was called the One Page Wonder class. And mm -hmm. in that she did the same, you know, had the same encouragement, admonishment, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> where she said to make a dummy book or a practice book. And so I did. I made the dummy book, the practice book, and I did them also in the, the other class I did with her. And it's a really good idea. It really is a really good idea. And so this is my dummy book. And it's. I'm so glad I made it because it's so cute, people. It's so <laughs> cute. It's so cute. It is. Look at this. Now, this is made out of um, just copy paper. And it has a cover that um, that slips so the book will slip out and so this was my my test book and then I just made a little belly band out of some jelly print or some paste paper or something so that's my little test book to see how it worked but it's so cute it. so cute. It. It cute okay so then I made the big uh, a big one and so mm -hmm. this one is um, the cover is not finished I just wrapped it around just so you could you know get the idea and then I tied this so the the cover is made from jelly print mm. fabrics so I will you know slick it up and everything but it's made from uh, hot press watercolor paper and so that is the book but it also will slip out of the the cover when I get the cover done but one of the things that's just cool about this structure is that you know it'll it'll open up if you want to open it up it doesn't have to but you can if you want to and I just you know I, I like things you can play with and so that's pretty fun for me so that's the bigger one then I made a middle sized one and this is the one I'm going to show you the the um, could be slightly offensive technique on. <laughs> <laughs> and so the cover is made from a hand dyed fabric and mm. the pages were made from Canson mixed media paper and so I've got three different types of paper that I tried and that's one of the things Kyla is really good about encouraging you to try is different mm -hmm. kinds of paper to see how they fold or how they cut or how they tear and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So anyway the cover um, as I said this is a piece of hand dyed fabric that I dyed so this was PFD fabric which is prepared for dyeing fabric doesn't have to be but that's what I got it was a Kona cotton that was prepared for dyeing mm -hmm. so it's this kind of fabric and to get well, it, the reason that I wanted to show Kyla this, it shows maybe better on this side. See the circle um, emblems here? Yeah. Kyla is nuts about circles, and I am too. They show up in my work a lot. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I know that they show up in your work a lot. Spirals mm -hmm. show up a lot for me. Circular forms are really big, you know, for mm -hmm. what I do. And I know they are for you, too, because I've watched enough of your videos to know that. So anyway, I saw this piece of fabric, and I thought, that's going on the cover. And then I thought, I can't show this without showing them how to do this. So I'm going to show you this real quick, and then Kyla is going to, I'm going to be her guinea pig, and she's going to teach me something. Yay. Okay, how many of you know what this is? Anybody know what that is? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to give the chat a minute, and... Um, and I just want to say hi to everybody that's, that's coming in because there's a lot of you that I didn't speak to by name, but I'm so glad you joined us. Thanks for being here. Anybody know what this is? We're going to find out if there's any farm girls or people who grew up on the farm that um, know what this thing is. Any, any guesses yet? Yep. Looks painful. Yep. Yep. It is. Okay. So here are the things you use with this tool. You buy it in uh, the farm supply store. Or, um, you know, like we have a place around here that's called Orchelins, which is, you know, farm, farm and home kind of thing. 
and you use some glass marbles and then you use little tiny rubber bands okay it's not for hole punching but that was a good guess you use these little special rubber bands okay all right so and I learned this from my fiber study group I didn't make it up all right so what you do is you load this thing with the rubber band so it goes over the end like that okay and you have to have this because that's what spreads the rubber band okay mm -hmm. see that all right so here's what you do regular recording everybody okay so back to what we were doing we have a little marble and so I'm going to put it under the fabric and I'm going to gather it up under so this is under the fabric okay so it's, I'm going to wait until everybody's okay they're back um, so I've gathered it under the fabric then I take this tool and I spread it out and I put it over so it's holding the marble in the fabric and then I'm going to pull that rubber band off okay and so what you end up with is a marble in the fabric with a rubber band around it holding it kind of gathered up all right like that so you see that that kind of gathery circle you can see it really well here that's yeah. what's happening mm -hmm. <clears throat> all right so i'm going to do it one more time <clears throat> any guesses as to what this is yet <clears throat> <clears throat> I'm going to put another rubber band on the tool. Okay, so it's on there. And after you've used the rubber bands a few times, they loosen up a little bit. But you really want them to be pretty tight. So I've loaded it with the rubber band. I'm going to put the um, marble. They're guessing all kinds of things. Ear tag, <laughs> appliance, uh, tail cutter. You guys are, you're getting, you're sort of right, but not quite. I mean, you're, you're kind of there, but not exactly. Okay, so I got the marble. Spread the rubber band. Grasp the marble. Pull it down on top of the, just slip it off the tool. And then I just kind of, you know, um, spread the fabric a little bit. Mm. So that it, you know, I don't want that rubber band to come springing off and, smack me in the face or anything but when you're done with using this you have this whole fabric goes you know quite small and it's got all of these little rubber banded marbles on there <laughs> APG Jamie got it I'm not gonna say it that way but APG Jamie got it <laughs> okay and so you do this all over the fabric and then you prepare your dye bath and you dye it and when it's all done and it's processed however you processed your dye fabric then you take it out and you dry it and then you take off all the little rubber bands and take the marbles out and Bob's your uncle you end up with fabric like that Wow. okay so what this is is a castration tool okay oh. Oh. and the, <laughs> that's what I said I apologize if I offended anyone uh, every man in here just went, oh, <laughs> I'm sure. these are castrating bands. Okay. Oh. And if, in case you want to know, this is not recommended for calves over 250 pounds. Okay. So <laughs> there you go. And this is the tool that applies the rubber bands. And now you know the rest oh. of the story. Oh my gosh, Barb. Okay. Did I make you blush? Tiny bit. Sorry. Tiny bit. I told you. I told you. I warned you in advance. But you know, the bigger question here, Barb, is yes. at what point did you decide that you were going to use that to dye fabric? Like, how do you make that tra that transfer from what it's really intended for to, hey, I could use this to dye fabric? I kid you not. I went to this um, fiber study group that I belong to at the University of Missouri. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, I walked in, and the whole subject matter was on dyeing fabric. And so we were to bring fabric, and they were, they were doing a whole study in dyeing in the course of two hours. So it wasn't, you didn't have much time. And I see these people, there were a bunch of them that had this tool, that had this tool in their hands, and they're doing this thing. And I'm like, okay, so nobody, like, said, 
you know, this is what it is. And I walked over to them and I said, what are you doing? And they said, we're selling, they said, well, we're, we're preparing this fabric to dye it. And I said, what is that thing? And nobody really wanted to tell me what it was because they thought that I would be offended, you know. So I wasn't the one that came up with this. No, 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 no. But I have <laughs> used it. <laughs> and, that is hilarious. And Lynn says, leave it to the crafters. And that is true. That, that is, is true. true. So anyway, that is my share for you. So, so now I'm going to get my journal out because I'm going to just take the cover off and, and um, beat that, beat that, Kyla. <laughs> I don't, you know, hum. I know. I don't know that I can. I know. Oh gosh, that's awesome, though. I love it. <laughs> so, Kyla, I am in Kyla's hands, and she is going to direct oh, me. Awesome. And I am here to tell you, this is mighty scary. It mighty is scary. mighty scary. It, it can be mighty scary. So I'm, <laughs> here's the thing, though. I was thinking about this, Barb, and you know me. I immediately go to the, like, okay, what can I do? I'm going to have this whole thing, and I'm going to – and then I thought, you know what? That's not even – no, let's, let's actually rein it in, okay. and let's do something pretty simple. Okay. Because I think there's – what I'm learning now, I can't, I cannot say that this has been my philosophy in life, but I mm -hmm. am learning mm -hmm. that sometimes the simplest thing is the most beautiful thing. So okay. I want us to do, I was going to do like two little pages and I just want it to be really simple. Um, uh -huh. But also at the same time, I think it might. And, and here, and let me say this part too, as mixed media people, and crafters and right we have so many things at our disposal that we sometimes feel like we have to use everything we've got to mm -hmm. have layers and we got to have gesso right. and we got to do molding paste and let's bring out the stencils and where are the stamps and right we think we have to be using all of that stuff all the mm -hmm. time yeah so this is this is also my mm -hmm. attempt at giving people permission to every now and then just have a page spread in your journal that is really simple okay um, and not feel like you always have to do the whole layers and all the different yeah. bits and pieces. Okay? All right. So let's start like super simple with just some, do you have watercolor handy? Um, or um, either watercolor or ink tints blocks. Yes. Yep. Um, Hang on just a minute. I'm, I know where they are. And for those of you playing along with us, um, yeah, grab some watercolor or ink tints blocks if you have that whatever you have handy i think my favorite um i got watercolors at the ready awesome okay and then just you know either a water brush whatever you have that you can use all righty uh, it's a good thing that race is somewhere else in the in the world because he would be ready to have a conniption because I have been told um, no liquids on the table. <laughs> uh oh, do not get in trouble with our tech support. Please. That's right. Guess what I have? Water on the table. <laughs> okay. I love it. All right. All right. So Barb, I mm -hmm. want you to just um, and everybody whoever's playing with us. Kind of look at your page and kind of get in your mind what the center is, but don't be too attached to like, it has to be the exact center. But I want you to kind of think about leaving white space as a, a little bit of a border around the page. Doesn't oh, this is exact. really stretching me. <laughs> Doesn't have to be exact, but we are going to leave some white space. Um, and then I want you to just pick four colors. Mm -hmm. Okay. Try not to make mud. So you can avoid it. I make mud all the time, so right. you know, it happens, it happens, but try to avoid the mud if you can. So I have to, um, <laughs> your race responded with, you can do whatever you want. And just, <laughs> nice. uh, I just need to answer a question for a second. Trina wants okay. to know, uh, Barb, just thinking, do those tools come in bigger sizes for bigger circles? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the answer. Sorry, I don't know the answer. <laughs> okay, okay, so I'm going to do four colors. Yeah, just pick four colors. Okay. And what you want to do is, you know, just get your watercolors really, really wet. Um, okay. Well, let me wait, 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 let me say it. When I say really, really wet, in the pan, really, really wet. Okay. And then when you bring them onto your paper, 
um, come onto the dry paper with mm -hmm. a really wet brush of color. And you want to do big blobs. You want to have okay. blobs. Like, maybe like um, you want the colors to kind of play with each other on the page. You just want to be really free. Um, don't try to overthink it. Don't try to make it be something that it's not. Just put down four colors. Let them touch. Let them blend together a little bit, which is why I'm saying try not to make mud. Um, and then just see what you get on your paper. I'm okay. going to do the same. Am I ready to go? Yep, you're ready to go. Okay. Four colors. Just start kind of putting them down on the page and try to keep them wet so that, you know, wet watercolors tend to blend together better. You can use different shades of the same color if you have, you know, depending on your watercolor palette. And I'll kind of show you all. Yep, exactly what you're doing there, Barb. You got it. And oh, the play. white space. I don't know, Kyla. It's a big <laughs> challenge for me. Leave yourself some space around the edges. I should have gotten a bigger brush here. My brush is kind of tiny. These aren't even watercolor brushes that I'm using. That's you know, they're just kind of they're just kind of inexpensive um, brushes, but I love them so. Yeah, I love that you're using Prang. Uh huh. Um, because I'm over here using one that I bought at Office Depot. It's like Reeves brand, but it is my favorite watercolor uh -huh. to use because they're so, um, you know, they're the ones from the kids section yep. and they're just easy. Yep. You I love the Barbie. colors, you know, the colors that are in the praying set. I've. Okay, come on. There we go. All right. Okay, we should be back. So should I dry this? Yes. Um, so if you um, if you have, you know, a heat tool or whatever you have there, you can mm -hmm. definitely just go ahead and dry it. That's, you know, speeds up the process. I have a lot of drippy things around the edge. Do I leave those? Yeah. You know what? As you're drying your page, Barb, just kind of, you know, tilt it, dry okay. it, and, tilt, and let it kind of swirl around and move around okay. a little bit. Okay. I'm going right. to dry mine over here as well. Yeah, that's good. Dabbing in is good too. Love it. Does it need to be completely dry? Um, it um it does. Okay. Um, but where we can move to the the page next to it, the other page next to it, and do something there while that one air dries a little more. You want okay. to do that? Let me give it just another shot. Okay. Okay, we'll let it finish the rest of the way. They want to know if you'll hold yours up so you can they can see yeah. what you're doing. Yep. There's mine. Oh, that's cool. A circle. <laughs> yeah, right, that just comes out. Can't yep. help it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so now, very simply, I want you to just think of, um, now, I'll tell you, I take a little help from my from my tea. Um, I drink Yogi tea. It's like one of my favorite teas. And they always have these little cute sayings mm -hmm. on the, um, on the, 
tea bag. I don't know what that thing is called. The little, you know, the tag, the little tag. Yeah, the tag. Mm -hmm. um, and they always have these cute little sayings or quotes or whatever. Sorry, I'm trying to get to mine. Um, and so I keep those. I collect them. And I have one here that says, goodness should become human nature because it is real in nature, right? So whatever you, any quote that you have, just it can be a quote that's something in your head, a mantra, something you always say. Mm -hmm. um, and you want to try to write it like write, you want to write it inside of this thing that you've created here. Mm -hmm. Again, leaving some space. So you're not trying to fill up the whole space. So for instance, I could write mine around the edge. I could write it on the inside here, leaving space. Um, but you want, you don't want to try to fill up the whole space with your words, but mm -hmm. you do want to put, you know, a, a little quote in there. You can do it by hand. You can do it with rubber stamps. If you have stamps, if you want to do it that way. Um, but somehow you want to get the words in there, uh, which is why you want it to be dry. So if you want to move on to the second, the facing page, we could work mm -hmm. on that and then come back and do our lettering. Okay. All right. Yeah? Let's do okay. that. Okay. So now the next page, we're going to do two things. We're going to shift our perspective. So turn, turn to landscape. And then I want you to take some masking tape and divide your page into at least four sections. Okay. Let me go get some tape. Okay. I'll be right back. And so for those of you listening, I said masking, I think Barb knows, I mean like painters tape, you know, like something that will come up easier from, from the paper. I'm using green paint, painters tape because it will lay down, but then when it's time to pull it up, it won't pull the paper up as well. So Barb, I was just clarifying for everybody that um, you want to use a tape that is um, going to come up easy, you know, when it's time to take it up. And okay. I know you already know that. Well, so we I hope this one will come up. <laughs> 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 okay, four, um, four um, sections. Four sections. And then, you know, let me say this too, Barb. I'm going to do a variety of, see how I've torn my tape here? It's not quite a straight edge on both sides. So you can do straight edges or you can, you know, kind of play around and have different edges. And I encourage you not to have equal sections. Try to have some sections that are larger than the other. Try to keep it interesting on the page. Um, Trina wants to know if uh, washi tape would washi tape work. Oh yeah, washi tape would work. Now, Trina, I don't know what kind of washi tape you use, but I have some washi tapes like the Scotch brand that are actually pretty darn grippy and t and, and pretty strong. So make sure you use one that is, um, you know, going to come up pretty easily. So yes, yes to washi tape as long as you know it, it will come up easy. So this is for all of you out there who, you know, sometimes you, you think to yourself, I just don't have time to be creative. I haven't played in my art journal in months and weeks, all right? Sometimes you can just find one of these little things that's one of these little activities, these little exercises that's really quick and easy to do. Okay, I got four sections, all right. as it were. So I'll, sh I'll show you mine. Oh, I love that you did that, Barb. That's awesome. I love that you've got... Uh, sort of things going in diagonal. That's cool. All right. So now because we've got the facing page, right? Mm -hmm. You want to, you don't have to do this, but I encourage you to use colors that either complement or contrast okay. from this. So like you've got, we both have a little bit of blues and mm -hmm. ours. I think you had some magenta at the top corner of yours. Mm -hmm. So try to use colors that you think will either um, complement or be like start contrast to so not the same colors is what i'm saying okay not the exact same colors mm -hmm. so. contrasting colors okay also super watery and stuff like that yep. so you're going to do that same activity this time you're going to go across the tape like allow yourself to go across the tape if you want to okay. just leaving the tape down there but yes play you know free 
just kind of dabbing it on and seeing what you get. Multiple colors. So this might, you know, we've got a, a whole page we're trying to do here, Barb. This might be, was there a story you were going to, you know, I'm always, I come to these things to hear your stories. <laughs> Well, the story I have to tell you involves this, all the uh, es escapades from last night, people. <laughs> last night was an exciting night around here. As you can tell, my body has been ailing, and so I had the best plans to go to bed early last night. Okay? Okay, there's one, two, three. I'm trying to come up with a fourth color here. All right. I don't know that I've got... Or totally. you, might be able to re you might be able to repeat one from your other page. That would be okay. Yeah, that I think would I'm be gonna good. have to repeat one too. Yeah. Yeah, so I was gonna go to bed early, people. And I came up here to make the cover for my journal so I'd have that done today. Right? So I came up, had a great plan, thought mm, I know exactly what I'm gonna do, or sort of. And um Okay, while I'm while I'm telling this story, I need to just kind of put these colors here and there on this page too, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Just kind of. Am I um, leaving some white space here and there too? Yeah, I was going to say, see if you can leave some white space in varying parts, um, and just kind of play around with it. So, am I putting like one color? No, you're doing some colors. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So I came up here, as I said, I was going to get. Uh, you know, get my journal cover done, thinking, oh, yeah, that'll be great. You know, that'll work. I got time. It was only like 10 o'clock when it came up, right? Mm -hmm. Only 10 o'clock. And um, the next thing I know, the phone rang, and it was the technical department who wanted <laughs> to test out the audio for today, you know, so we could make sure that the audio was going to be, was going to work properly, properly today because there's a lot of moving parts in this in this particular thing to make this happen well um yeah i blinked and it was 4 15 a.m people do you see what i do for you guys <laughs> do you see what i do for you guys we love yes. you Barb. We i know love you, Barb. my body should have been in bed hours before that but anyway I have to say, it's working out, so aside from a couple of glitches, the audio has been great, so, you know, we still have a little, you know, we still have a little bit to work out, but hey, it'll happen. It will. Yeah, so if I'm, if I sound like I'm operating, you know, on less than full power, it's because I am, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> let's just be honest. Okay, so this is, um, this is looking interesting. It is. And I like it. So what 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 shall I now, do to it now? Now you're gonna just um dry it. Let dry. it dry. Now before you do that though, Barb, mm -hmm. here's one thing you could do. If okay. you have if if you have something nearby that's handy like a straw and mm -hmm. you've got really wet spots, you can use mm -hmm. a straw to kind of blow some of those wet spots and make I? what I like to call like veins. Um but if you don't, don't don't worry, don't have to do it. Um Try that's one idea. I yeah. Another idea is to take like a skewer or something really pointy, the, the end of a paintbrush, and take that white, the, the stuff that's really wet, mm -hmm. and almost like draw in it and make lines outward with it. Like kind of play in it, scribble. It, yeah, like just allow it to, you know, see what happens if you do that. I'm going to grab my little... This is pretty cool. I don't have any straws here. I'll do um I'll show people what the, the straw version looks like. So okay. Kind of yeah, I love that. I love that. Love that. So it works really well when the paint is really wet for those of you that are playing along. So you just now this is gonna drip off all over the place, but you can kind of see how the straw makes it mm -hmm. have these little lines. Kind of goes. Exactly. Mm 
That's pretty cool. I've not ever yeah. done that before. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. Pretty cool. And then you want to then you want to just dry it. You can let it air dry, or you can hit it with the heat tool. Um, All right. We'll it give it a dry. little. We'll give it a little. Do you want me to tip it around and stuff too? Yeah. Yeah. I'll do that. Okay. I like it. That's a good color. Okay, it's got a little bit more um, drying to do, but it's, um, it's not too yeah. bad. Nice. Okay, so now take your tape up. Take up the tape. Okay. That pink is really vibrant. I don't know if I'm just seeing it different on my mm -hmm. screen than it really this. is in real life, but it is so vibrant and beautiful. It's that um, red-violet in the mm -hmm. praying hand mm -hmm. set. I should have gone over the lines I think a little bit more maybe. No it looks good I like it for what we're doing next is perfect. Okay all right. Oh I love it okay so now you can so I'll just show mine here's sort of what I've got here. Oh okay cool. So the idea is we have all this white space in between our little sections there mm -hmm. that that becomes our journaling space like okay. instead of thinking of these inner as the journaling space we're mm -hmm. going to journal around them okay so i'd like to use for this this side of the page i like to use something really thin like uh i don't know what the point is on this but this is one of those um pilot multi-ball pins uh -huh. um, which is similar to the perma ball i think it's also called mm -hmm really really thin so maybe like a 0.1 micron kind of pin and really just get fine lines through there in journal right mm -hmm. and then on this side i like to use something more like the pop you know like the um this one's called a, a multi-pin mm -hmm. simo something that has a really thick bold line on this side okay so there are, so we're trying to like we're trying to have these two sides be in conversation with each other Okay. One is one is really loud, mm -hmm. so that's like the that's like the you know you, you can pick which side is the opposite of what I'm saying. Like maybe the bold lines, the bold marker is on the side for you, Barb. It would be your pink side, right? Mm -hmm. and then the markers on the other. Side. And the other thing might be to even side. Okay. But the idea is to have them be in conversation with each other. So mm -hmm. whatever mantra, quote, thing you put on one side, the mm -hmm. other side is almost like your response to it. So they're kind of talking to each other. Oh, you're making me stretch here. I know, and you know I was, you know I was. Yes, you're making me stretch. <laughs> I got to get out my, then, my book. Of Am I, are we going to do that yet? Are we yeah, doing we, that? I mean, we're done with the painting part. The last part is uh -huh. really like the sort of embellishments, right? So mm -hmm. for me, that would be adding my words, mm -hmm. whatever way I'm going to do that. Uh -huh. And then I like to finish my pages off with a little bit of like splatter, you know, oh, so. yeah either some black splatter, even taking a fine line pen and bringing, highlighting some of the detail in the watercolor blobs, mm -hmm. right? 
So for me, those would be the final touches, like the Thank sort you. of finishing things. To All do. right, well, let's splat it a little bit. Yeah. I do have to admit, I like, I like splats. Me too. Okay, so I'll use some splats of black watercolor. This is getting dangerous, people. You get the black <laughs> watercolor splats going, everything starts getting splatted. Okay, yes, I agree. Okay. I'm going to just put a couple of um, a couple of paper towels to kind of protect a couple of pieces of equipment here. <laughs> yes, do not get me in trouble with race, please. please well, please. it could be it's already <laughs> too late cuz um, I'm sure I I'm sure I'm already in trouble about the water on the table. <laughs> I love it. Um I understand I the concept. I was, putting, I was putting something on um, on a page the other day, and I was doing white splatters, mm -hmm. and I had on a black shirt, which I in quote mark, in quotation marks, I'm putting my good black shirt. Right. Uh, and then at the end, I was like, Ugh, I don't have <laughs> I have no clothes that don't have paint on them. Everything yep. has paint or gesso. There's glue on everything. I'm like, yeah. I give up. I give up. It's true. It's true. Everything. Everything. everything I have no good clothes. I mean, I've stopped saying, well, I've got on my cruddy clothes today for you guys because <laughs> every day it's cruddy clothes. Every day. Exactly. Right here with I you. mean, I have on a white shirt. I'm living dangerously, but this white shirt is in terrible shape, so it makes no difference what it gets covered with. Okay, so I'm going to um, hit this a little heat to dry my splatters. Nice. I love the challenge of leaving the white space because mm -hmm. that is so contrary to what I normally do. Yeah. I think that's true for most of us in mixed media. Yeah. Okay, I think it's fairly dry. Cool. Well, I'm gonna I'm writing my quote in, but I want to double check the spelling of a word here because you know I spelled it wrong. Um, that's probably wrong, but I'm gonna go with it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep, I understand. Uh, we'll see. Somebody will correct me. Yeah. Okay. Um, race it stopped. Um, a couple times. I think this is the fourth recording. He's asking me if everything's going okay. Oh. So, okay. just so you know, just a couple things we need to work out yet, but you know, we're having fun. That's what's yeah. important. We are, we are. He missed the whole, um, I think he might have missed the whole discussion about this. That's probably why he left. He didn't want to hear about that. <laughs> he didn't want to hear about that. So let's see if I can get my paint pens to work. Because that's always a challenge. Yes. Oh, now, what, what are your favorite paint pens to use, Bart? Which ones oh, are you? Oh, it's the one that works. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay, so I have the pen that works, but now I need a quote. Where'd my quote book go? Okay. My book of intentions from a few years ago is oh, my nice. book that I put quotes in. Mm. I love that book. Oh, I like this one. Okay. So I'm going to put the big one over here. And I'm going to have to doodle on top of it to make it show up, I'm sure. But I'm going to I'm gonna go with it this far. Awesome. Yeah, that's what I'm having to do, too. I'm going over my words with white so that they kind of stand out a little more. And I'll show everybody what I got here in a sec.
I don't know about you, Barb, but the lettering always feels like um, meditation a little bit to me. Mm -hmm. Like uh, you have to focus. Yeah. And it's better if I don't try to make it perfect. Okay, so I got that side, and now I'll go down, go back and play with the lettering and stuff, but that's, that's... Oh, I love it. Generally helps me untangle. I love it, Barb. Okay, that's one of my that's favorite ones. All right, what else do I want to use? Something that kind of has conversation with that, huh? Yeah. So, for instance, you know, I would say if you're writing... You know, you wrote the word untangle. Journaling helps you untangle. So the mm -hmm. other side of the page might be, what does it even mean to be untangled? Like, what does that look like? For you? Like, it might be just your actual thoughts on the, the quote. Or mm -hmm. it could be another quote in response to that quote. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. You guys have a good, um, anybody in the in the chat have a good quote that would be in response to this mm. that would be fun to see what you guys have to say pop it in the chat if you do mm. you know i want to say too for those who are um okay out there kind of listening if you use dip pens people who use dip pens this is a great sort of dip pen activity too sometimes my pens are um Okay, I'm gonna switch to something else. My pins aren't working out, working with me. So I'm gonna switch to a different one. How about, let's do this so one. So here's my, here's my left side or my one side with the big quote. Oh, that's cool. Active rebellion, yeah, for sure. That's for sure. Yeah. Self-love is an act of rebellion. Yeah. So we're, um, February is our month for talking about self-love in the uh, Journey Within class. So I thought, okay, that's a good way to sort of think about our theme for the month. Okay, so I know how to read it, but you guys might not. So <laughs> this says journaling helps me untangle, and this says always say yes to the present moment. Mm. So those are my love it. Those are my two responses to that, to I each other. Nice. I love these. I love these two pages. I mean, I'll go back and play with them some more, but I love these. Yeah. Yeah. 
I love them too, Barb. They're great. So there's, what did you do on your second page? So my second page, I haven't um, done yet. I just oh, found okay. the right pen for it, but I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually going to do like a sort of journal, you know, up and around in these uh -huh. white spaces. Um, and I think I'm just going to write, I think I'm going to make myself a little list of ways I can demonstrate self-love to myself, like mm -hmm. what I can do for mm -hmm. self-love, self because sometimes I forget like, a massage is my way of getting a little bit of stuff. Like, that's my way of taking oh, care of Oh, I haven't had one of those in so long. I used to get <laughs> one all the time. Yeah. 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 Um, the gift of, like, a pedicure. The gift of time sitting and just having a cup of tea by the window. Not having to be multitasking all the mm -hmm. time. Like, mm -hmm. just the little simple things mm -hmm. um, that I can do that's just for me and yeah. not for, you know, everybody else in the mm -hmm. world. So, yeah. I think I'll make myself a little a reminding a reminder list <laughs> yeah a couple yeah. of um comments from the chat um dip pens pam wants to know what a dip pen is sarah mm. responded with like a calligraphy pen you dip into ink yep um dawn says like a quill pen you have to dip in the ink um yep. and sarah said that uh, there are assorted nibs that you can use with the nib holder mm -hmm. and that they're also glass dip pens mm, yeah and yep. uh, all of those are right and jamie had a response for this page i think not all moments are tangled k-n-o-t not all moments are tangled <laughs> jamie's a wordsmith it. she's definitely that's great jamie i didn't see yeah. it quick enough but that's I like great that. i like that one too i may that add great. that i may add that just down here just with a just with a pen yeah if anybody's um barb i don't know if uh if folks can like if they're on instagram or facebook or something they can maybe post their pictures tag us so we can see if they may you know if other people played along uh-huh that'd be cool to see what they did so yeah if you can tag kyla on instagram you can tag me i don't do instagram so much but i do twitter and so you can tag me or um mm -hmm. tweet me at barb owen designs follow me on twitter because that's where i always send out the message that I'm going to stream mm -hmm. and Kyla does a lot on Instagram and what are you at um, uh, Kyla gives Kyla gives yeah yeah so that's great that's a great idea so if any of you have, have been doing this with us we'd love to see what you do and uh, share with us that would be great great this is fun do you right. do you always edge your pages? That's something I tend to do is go back and ink the edges of pages. Do you do that all the time or sometimes or? You, you know what, Barb? I usually do. And I'm trying to train myself to because I usually edge everything in black. Mm -hmm. But then now I'm looking at this page and I'm like, would I really want to edge it in black? I don't know. Do I? So yeah. I'm, I'm trying to, you know, play around with different different styles because usually my pages you know, are very like heavily, you know, they got all the whole page mm -hmm. is covered. There's no white space and everything's yeah. really right. Mm -hmm. So this is a page that definitely could get a black inking and it would be perfect. Yeah. So yeah, I usually do ink do the edging of my pages. I just wondered on you know when you've got like the white around now yeah. you can see I already doodled a border around this part of it just because <laughs> you know it's it. like this thing in me. It's like yes. and I'll go back and add to that I'm sure but yeah this yeah. is really fun I really like this do you guys that. enjoy seeing that, this yeah I love how that top corner of the pink side almost looks like fire flow like it has mm -hmm. this very fiery yeah. um, look to it yeah. I couldn't do that again if I tried but that's a beaut <laughs> that's the beauty of watercolor you yeah. know I mean that's that is cool. the beauty of watercolor I yeah. love that huh. so any uh, any other things you want to share with the group before we do the drawing um, no, just if you, you know, even if you were, you know, watching along, but you couldn't play along and you say don't have watercolors, but you have acrylic paint, you can take acrylic paint, paint and get it really like drippy wet and mm -hmm. have, you know, and still do the same kind of okay. technique. It doesn't layer. I mean, it doesn't blend quite mm -hmm. the same, but it, you can still get a similar effect if you don't. So don't feel like you got to run out and have watercolors to do this technique. Um, mm. Play with you could you probably have. do it with silks and stuff like that too, couldn't mm -hmm. you? Silks and the twinkling H two O's, and yeah, if you have yeah. those, or you know, I mean, pretty much, you could probably do it with ink. Don't you think the calligraphy yeah. inks? 
I was going to say, you could probably do it with like the dilution spray. Just take the, don't spray them. Just, you know, pour a little in a cup or something and use it as like watercolor paint. Mm -hmm. you could totally, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can use whatever you got. That's fun. I think that's a fun, fun. You got me thinking. You got Dawn <laughs> thinking too. Dawn says, it's as great. She feels inspired. Yay! Um, Yay awesome. And Trina says maybe do tangles and the doodling and the colored part. The reason I'm reading this so much of the chat is because Kyla didn't know the chat to be able to read yeah. it. So I'm reading it to her. So that's why we're doing that. But that's a good idea to, to um, tangle over here. That's a really good idea. A that little, is a good uh, idea. A little, um, you know, arty explanation mm -hmm. of what's over here too yeah. that's fun oh yeah because of the tangles yeah See, uh, I'm slow. i know I'm slow, i was I too it. i had to think about it <laughs> yeah and you can use the tombow markers as watercolors too absolutely mm -hmm. well my my journal is now officially got something in it yeah so i love that and i didn't start at the beginning and that's good because i always start at the beginning i just opened yeah. and there we go Nice. Okay, so fun, it. so fun. All right, so, so are you ready to do a drawing? I'm ready. Okay, yeah. so okay, so here's how it's going to work, folks. All right, it's time to do a drawing. And I will tell you, this is the first time we've done a drawing over here on YouTube Live, which we're grateful for. <laughs> <laughs> and even though we've had a little couple stumbles here today, overall it's gone pretty well. So we have a drawing, and Kyla, in case you came in late, is going to give away, did you say a year seat? A year. A, a, year, year, a whole a seat for the entire year in The Journey Within. Now, any of you, if you don't win the seat and you want to check on um, how to get into the class, it will be in the description box below the video. Um, I'm not sure Ray's put it in, but I will have it in the description box below the video, so you can always find it there. It is um, cr8w cr8.me. Sorry, cr8.me slash Kyla Class 2016. So it's create.me slash Kyla Class 2016. Or you can also just go to Kyla's blog or Kyla's website, kylagivehand.com, and you'll find all the details there. So the the important thing is. Just go investigate the class because I think it's I think you'd have a good time. Yeah. All right. So, OK, thanks, Rhea. She said, yes, it's in the description box. Thanks, Jan. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so how we're going to do this is mm -hmm. you're going to get to you can't do anything yet. Don't do anything yet. Till I explain to till I explain these here rules, people okay? <laughs> <laughs> got explained the rules. So we're going to go from one to a hundred. Okay. That's what our range is. The numbers go from one, one to a hundred. And I'm going to be typing in the chat. And I'm going to type the letters G O. Okay. Not when I say it, when I type it. So when I type the letters G O in the chat, then you're going to be free to put your numbers in and they're going to go flying into the chat. Okay. We're going to give you plenty of time because there is a lag, and so we're going to give you plenty of time to put your numbers in. The way it's going to work is that Kyla is going to generate a number on her end. All right, so she's going to get the number, and you guys do your tele, uh, telepathic thing so you can get the number. And so she's going to put the number in, and then when, we, when I type in the letters S-T-O-P, at that point, it's officially cut off. No matter if anybody puts numbers in later, it's cut off. And then what we have <coughs> is the first person without going over the number, that's the person that's going to win the seat in the class. And then when if you're the lucky person, you have to be here to do it in person, live. If you're the one that wins the seat in the class, then you will need to contact Kyla directly. And Kyla is that... Uh, what? How do you want them to get to you? Um, they can. I don't know. What's easy? Um, Probably email. Email. Yeah. Okay. So then let's just put um, Kyla dot givehand at gmail dot com. Kyla dot givehand at mm -hmm. gmail dot com. Okay. Yep. Do you guys get that? Kyla dot givehand at gmail dot com. Okay. 
All right, you ready? Go. Put your numbers in. Oh, there we go. Choop. Yep. So between 1 and 100, one number only, one number only. If you happen to put in more than one number, we'll take your first number. We got lots of numbers coming in. And it's the person who is closest to the number without going over. Okay? There, Damon, put your email address in. Kyla.givehand at gmail.com. Thank you, sweetie. Rocky Kendall. My goodness, how are you? I haven't seen Rocky in ages, my friend. <laughs> we, go at, we go back to when our children were infants. Well, maybe oh, wow. not infants, but toddlers. <laughs> Damon is guessing, too. <laughs> DQ. DQ. Damon is DQ'd. Oh, yes, he is. <laughs> Good to see you, Rocky. All right. So um, I'm going to wait a couple more minutes here because I have, um, now Damon's laughing. Sure he is. Sure he is. Now he's trying to get back in my good graces for, for rule violations. I mean, really. <laughs> you have to buzz him. You should have like a buzzer. That's right. Yeah. All right. We're going to stop. Okay. Stop. All right, so all the numbers are stopped. All right, what's the number? What's the big reveal? 27. All right, let me see if I can get back. Okay, you guys need to help me look through the chat. Okay. Okay, Margot, Margot Chris. Uh, hang on just a minute. I think she okay. was the first one. You guys double check me. M-A-R-G-O-T-C-H-R-I-S was right on it for 27. Does anybody else wow. see anything different? Okay. She's the one that got it on the nose. M-A-R-G-O-T-C-H-R-I-S. Okay. So, Margo... You need to email Kyla your information, yeah. and she, um, you can work out all the details together, okay? Yay, all right. Margo! Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for playing. How awesome. Okay, that was only 27 that Damon saw, too. Okay, so we got, we got confirmation that I wasn't seeing things. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, Kyla, thank you so much for... Um, Teaching me some new stuff today. Thank you, great. Barbara. Thank Let you. me play. Yeah, it was great. It really was. It was just super fun. I love doing this. This is a great page. Yeah, yeah I love great it. The techniques. Color, I'm telling you, you're going to make me go out and buy some praying. Not that I need another set of watercolors, but I'm like, look at how vibrant that is. So, there's, yeah. They're so they're cheap. Awesome. They're so, <laughs> well, I try not to use the word cheap. They're so affordable. That's a better <laughs> word. Yes, affordable. I'm gonna I'm gonna adopt that word because yeah. I tend to say cheap too, but affordable sounds better. I like I it. I know, but really and truly they're cheap, so there you go. Yeah. And they yeah. come they come in this set of um, you can get a set that's half this many colors mm. or the double set, you know. I like so the I like the double set because you get all the colors. Yeah. You nice. know, why have a few when you can have a lot? That's my philosophy. Right. Water off the table, so we'll keep the sun uh, technical department happy. And so I'm going to um, bid you farewell. Thank you so much for everything, for coming and joining us, playing along. And then I'm going to um, get the sponsors out so I don't make the chat mad. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Barb. It's been fun. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks a lot. Okay. Now, Bye, everybody. I will see you soon. Okay. Okay, I just got to get myself back to um, back to the world of, so don't go anywhere quite yet, because I just got to make sure I get back. Thanks, Kyla. Thank you. 
Okay, you guys. Um, let me get the sponsors and we will wrap this up. Hopefully, everything is still doing what it's supposed to be doing. Thanks, Damon. Okay, let me get sponsors out. Are you coming? Okay, come on. They want to see you. I don't know why, but they want to see you. Are you coming? You coming up here? One of them has already exited the room. Are you coming? Come on. Are you coming up here? Come on. He didn't get to come up here last week, so apparently, um, apparently he's upset with me now. You coming up? Well, come on. Oh, goodness. Goodness. Yeah. How you doing? Huh? How you doing? Here he comes. Yep. We got sponsor number one. This is Chance, in case you're new here and you don't happen to, you might not have been here before and you haven't, uh, haven't met this guy. This is Chance. He's a Blue Point Siamese and he keeps me tracking. The reason they're called sponsors. Hi, Betty. Nice to have you. Um, the reason they're called sponsors is because they let me stream and they let me work most of the time. <laughs> Not always. Not. They don't let me do it always, but they do let me do it most of the time, don't you? Oh, let's clean your eyes a little bit. Your eyes look a little cruddy. Yeah. They don't clean their faces very well when they're in the other room to get ready for their, their uh, camera time. Charlie, are you coming up? You coming? You coming up here? They've been in the sun where it's sunshiny, in the window where it's all sunshiny, and so they're, they're, they've are they're been boiling their blood, so they're lazy as all get out at the moment. So let me get Charlie. Okay. Are you coming up? Let's clean your face before you get up here and speak to the world, okay? All right. You coming up here? All right. There you go. There we go. All right. Mr. DeMille, are you ready for your close-up? Are you ready for your close-ups? We had a Muppet stream the other day when I was testing some stuff. Obviously, we still got a little more testing to do. There you can see him. Um... So Muppet streamed reluctantly for about 50 minutes the other day. Oh, you're welcome, Rhea. Kyla is um, Kyla is just a really inspiring artist, definitely. Hi, Pavla. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now you see what I was painting. Yeah. Yeah. Pablo, it's good to see you. All right. So thanks for um, dealing with my severe lack of sleep and for um, just hanging out with us today because it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed having you here. I enjoyed the having Kyla here. It was just a great, fun, fun day. So, you know, I'm going to stop just a shade early today. Because, quite honestly, I'm going to go take a nap. <laughs> uh, Trina says she's not getting notified from Google when we're coming on. Any idea why not? Uh, I don't think that Google notifies. The best thing to do is keep up with Twitter. And um, that's what I tweet it to remind everybody that I'm coming on. But you can pretty much set your clock by the fact I'm going to be here on Fridays at 2 p.m. Eastern. And sometimes I might be five minutes late, but, you know, that's the, that's what I'm going to do. So, so just, just check back here on Friday. That's the best thing. We will have an email notification set up. It's just not set up yet. So you'll get a, uh, an email that will tell you. Yeah. 
Oh, we'll get it worked out. It's just a couple little glitch. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of moving parts, and so it just takes a little bit to make it all work. Okay, so I'll tell you what, we are going to sign off, and I will see you guys again next week, um, Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. So thanks for joining me, and the sponsors and I are ready to say, see ya. Have a great weekend, everybody, and thanks for being here. Bye for now.